Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 18, New International Version. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. Present suffering and future glory. I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that we will be revealed in us. God's word for God's people. Church, we're coming to you today telling you to stop.
day. Uh, I am uh, excited to be here with you this morning. Although I start off with some news uh, that one of our generals, uh, one of our giants here at our church has gone on to be with the Lord. And it is extremely difficult to replace those people that have labored and have toiled in our congregation years in and years out. And so we mourn the loss of Carl Jones this week. Um, you may go by and see his family, Grace and, and Shannon and Carl and the family there um, at their house. You may send cards. Uh, the homegoing celebration will be next a Wednesday uh, at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, but that is a, fa a family only uh, private. You were in the midst of COVID. And so it is a very uh, private uh, family uh, situation. Uh, but also on Tuesday, July 21st, there will be a wake uh, from 2 to 4 p.m., a viewing from 2 to 4 p.m., and you are invited to go and view the body. And that will be at the Spalding Mortuary on the Brea, the Spalding Mortuary on the Brea. And that is Tuesday, July 21st, from 2 to 4 p.m. Amen. Let's pray together. Most good and gracious God, we thank you for this day and this time. I decrease that you might increase. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. It is in Jesus' name that we pray, and all God's people say amen and amen. I want to talk about hang in there. Uh, look at somebody that's around you, uh, that's watching and viewing with you, and tell them, say, hang in there. Oh, no, you need to say it like you mean it. Hang in there. Uh, there are so many things to complain about in life. We can complain about this or we can complain about that. We can complain about what we do have or what we don't have. And we can even look at other people's houses and complain about what they have, thinking that we are supposed to have what they have. And the whole thing with this coronavirus is enough to drive anybody and everybody crazy. And that brings so much complaint in the world that's around us. I reckon that life comes with challenges and life comes with situationships. And I learned this whole new thing, this whole new idea that life even comes with these things called entanglements. Oh, come on. Can I get an amen, church? Somebody. And I recognize that life has uh, ups and downs and that life is not easy at times. But the thing is, I've learned is that God never promised us that life would be easy. In fact, he says, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. In other words, I will be right there with you. You will experience life and you will experience the difficulties of life and the challenges of life. But despite what you feel and what you go through, hang in there. I'm right there with you. I have been sensing uh, a weariness and a restlessness in people's lives. Um, and I think part of it is this whole uncertainty about the days ahead. Workplaces are scrambling to figure out life for employees and, and staffing needs. And schools have just decided to continue virtually and money for people is scarce and unemployment is up and rent is due and COVID-19 is still packing a punch. Full banks are, are crowded and, 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 and um, setting record numbers and community resources are stretched thin and church doors are closed and life in America it's just different. And I think that difference affects our moods and our attitudes and how we respond. I note that I believe people are depressed, mentally exhausted, and trying to figure out life. Relationships are under pressure and being tested, and parent and child are frustrated, and learning is impaired, and nerves are bad, and people are sick all of the time, while other people are out marching and protesting and standing for social justice. The pressure is mounting and the distance of life is playing out right before us. And people, they're simply in difficult situations. And life is happening and all of the feels, they're real. 
They are real. This week alone, I, I was dealing with three very different life situations with families where life and death hung in the balance and helping them to navigate the pressures of such life was grave and difficult and helping to give them comfort and strength in the midst of their pain seemingly was difficult. But at the same time, I find hope in Jesus. I find joy because I know that trouble don't last always. And what I'm going through right now is not the end of my story. It is just a part of my journey to get me to where God has for me to go. I, I wish you would tell somebody that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I wish you would testify this morning that even though I've been through what I've been through, thank God I don't look like all that I have been through. All of your setbacks and all of your haters and all of your naysayers and all of your distractions and all of your sabotages and all of your situations and tests and trials, they were just set up to push you and propel you further into the destiny that God has for you. I know you're tired. But you can't give up yet. I read a post where a pastor said, pain makes you stronger. Tears make you braver. And heartbreak and heartbreaks make you wiser. So thank your past for a better future. Folks, you need to hang in there. You need to not throw in the towel. You need to keep the faith. You need to recognize that God is still working. Here it is, beloved that the text calls our attention today. And Paul is writing about the power of the Holy Spirit. He's writing about hope and the assurance of Christ in the midst of suffering. And he's writing at the end of chapter 8 to say, this confidence that we have in God makes us more than conquerors. The whole message to me in chapter 8 is, because you have this Holy Spirit in you, despite what you go through, you're going to be all right. You're going to make it through. God's going to see about you. So you got to keep hanging in there. And I guess if I start anywhere in the text, I would start right at chapter 8, verse number 12, where it tells us that you have an obligation, Paul says, to live not in the flesh, but to live by the Spirit. I mean, I think you have to look at life not through your fleshly eyes, but you got to look at life through your spiritual eyes. Because if you look at life through your fleshly eyes, you recognize that life is jacked up. Everything in the world is broken. People are broken. The systems in the world are broken. Views are broken. Families are broken. There's dysfunction on every corner. There's all kind of viruses and disease running rapid and people are coming out of bags and doing things and acting funny. When you look around, you look at a world that's full with fallen people in a fallen system. Not only that, we live in a world where everybody's taught to, to, to look out for themselves. So everybody is uh, living as if they're all crabs in a barrel. And as soon as you get up, somebody's going to try to yank you back down. And we pass this behavior on to our kids. You got to score the highest on the SAT. And if you don't score the highest on the SAT, you don't get into the best schools. We have this same situation in our in our communities. If I don't live in an upper community, my, my neighborhood is a food desert. All of us are living in this life, and this life is filled with dysfunction, and somehow we think life is going to get better because life gets better. Life don't get better because life gets better. Life gets better because I decide and make a choice that I'd rather live in the Spirit of God rather than to live in the flesh any single day. Because when I live in the Spirit, I do things by the Spirit. I love by the Spirit. I give by the Spirit. I serve by the Spirit. But when I, but when I live in the flesh, Paul said it best. There's no good thing in me 
who will not want to do good. Evil is all around. So it's this call right off the bat to say, you have to live by the spirit. Because spirit speaks to spirit. And God is in your life and he's in your life to bring you to a better place. And if I just look with my fleshly eyes, I will always be disappointed. I will always be struck down. I will always have an attitude. I will always be mad at the world. But when I live in the spirit, I see things differently. I see my enemy as my stepping stool to greater. I see my disadvantages as opportunities for advantage. I see my setbacks as set up for comebacks. I see my sabotages as uh, opportunities to, to get ahead. That's because I learned how to live life in spirit. Here is where I want to head and here's where I want to end up. At the end of the text, he says this, that I think is so important for us to hear this morning. He says, I know that your back is against the wall, but I want you to know that where you are going is greater than where you are coming from. In other words, he says, I consider that your present suffering is not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in you. Another version says, that's why I don't think there's any comparison between your present life and your life that is to come or the coming good times. In other words, where you're going is better than you where you come from. Another place says it like this, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. What do you do when you've done all you can do? You stand. That's what I'm called to tell you this morning. Hang in there when the going gets tough. Hang in there when your money is a little funny. Hang in there when you can't figure out your way. Hang in there when your relationships hang in the balance. Hang in there when you can't see your going from your coming. Hang in there when they tell you no. God's going to tell you yes. Hang in there when the darkness all tries to overtake you, but the light will come. Hang in there when you can't find your way. God will make a way. Hang in there, church. That's the good news. The good news is that God's glory will be revealed in your life. That's the good news. That God has not forgotten about you. That's the good news. They even know I might have to cry tonight. Tomorrow, there's a smile. That's the good news. That even though today may be a little bleak, God has the sunshine for me tomorrow. And as a matter of fact, when I think things over, all of my good days outweighs my bad days. I won't complain. God has been good to me. He's been better than this old world could ever be. Ah, oh, so I got to thank the Lord because I'm not in the ICU at this moment. I got to thank the Lord because my family is reasonably okay. I got to thank the Lord because my mental stability is all right in this moment. I got to thank the Lord because I might not have all the money that I want, but I certainly got enough to get through. I have to thank the Lord. Because he's still blessing my life. Somebody didn't make it. Somebody didn't wake up today. But I woke up. And for that very reason, I can hang in there. So my prayer, my earnest prayer for you this week, my encouragement to you this week is watch God do it. 
I, I, I said this at the beginning of 2020, and I, I still hold fast to this, that I believe that God wants to wow us, that there is something so big that God's going to do in our lives that it is going to amaze us. Now, when I said that, I wasn't expecting all this coronavirus and all these things to happen. But I still believe that the best is yet to come. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. God is going to do something so miraculous in our lives that we are going to be blown away. So friends, family, keep your head up. I know it's rough, but keep your head up. Keep smiling. Keep giving God thanks through it. Keep serving. And every time the enemy comes from you, just remind the enemy that he's defeated. He is defeated. He is defeated in Jesus' name. So I encourage you this week. Be blessed this week. I love you. Let me pray with you. Most good and gracious God, thank you. We honor you, God, for life. Lord, I bless my friends. I ask you to prepare and to open them up to receive the word today, God. May they recognize that greater is coming, that glory is coming, and that you will reveal yourself to them in time. Give them the strength to hang in there, to not give up, but keep the faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you today. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, accept, O oh Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of the world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. 
We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us every side, which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. You know, Father, the things of which we are afraid, the terror by night, the arrow by day, that takes us unawares and often finds us without a vital, ready faith. We know that you have not promised to surround us with immunity from all the ills to which flesh is heir. We only pray that when they come, if, if come, they must, they shall find us unafraid and with adequate resources to meet them. Give us a constant faith and a steady courage that we may never, neither whimper nor in peevish petulance complain before you. We thank you that you still rule over the world that you have made. Kings and emperors come and depart. All the shouting and the tumult, the screaming hurricanes of time have not deviated you from your path. Help us to remember, O oh Christ, that you are victorious, reigning over all, that in due time, in your own good time, you will work all things together for good to them that love you, who are called according to your purpose. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the trust of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience, by which he overcame temptation, for his dying, through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gist of your spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.